Today we're going to review Books of Blood Volume 1 by Clive Barker. It's six different short stories, one of which being the frame story for the rest of the series. Because this isn't the only Book of Blood or only entry in the series. There's the framing story, and then there's five other stories. It's kind of like an origin story of the Book of Blood, which is really cool. It's about a, a fake psychic who goes to a house, runs into some real supernatural stuff for the first time ever. And I'll leave it at that. But then we get into the short stories that are within the Book of Blood. The first being The Midnight Meat Train. If The Midnight Meat Train sounds familiar, that's because it's already a TV show. And I haven't watched it yet because I've always wanted to read the story first. And now that I have, I can definitely check that out. But basically, The Midnight Meat Train is about bad, terrible things that happen in the middle of the night in a New York City subway. Then we have The Yattering and Jack. The Yattering and Jack is basically about a lesser demon who is tasked with haunting the most boring, stoic man alive. This guy is unfazed by everything, and it, it's hilarious. Now, maybe you don't want to laugh from a horror story, but with this collection, it just kind of works. The next story is Pig Blood Blues, which is about a former detective who has just accepted a new job at a juvenile detention center. This particular camp has has a farm on it, and uh, bad things happen. I feel like all of these stories, I could just be like, here's. Here's a place, and then terrible things happen. The next, Sex, Death, and Starshine, is basically about the final show at a particular theater, and bad things happen. <laughs> and finally, we get to In the Hills, The Cities. In the Hills, The Cities is basically about two guys on their honeymoon traveling through Europe, and they come across these two small towns who are having their annual competition, and bad, terrible things happen. The major thing that sticks out to me when I'm reading these stories is the imagery. This is the kind of imagery that will stay with you after you've closed the book, after you've went to bed, closed your eyes, it'll stick with you. And I think that's that's really half of what I want personally out of a horror novel. Two things I'd like. One is the feeling of general just uneasiness. If a story can creep you out, if you close the book and you feel like you have to look over your shoulder, if it gives you that feeling, then it did its job. The other thing is, is the imagery. Can it paint a picture in your head where you close your eyes and you still see it and you go, damn, that is intense. <laughs> Each one of these stories will build up to a scene where it'll stick with you for quite some time. I've read each of these before I went to bed, right? I would read a story, then go to sleep. And for a couple of these, I definitely woke up kind of in the middle of the night, just briefly, like... Hmm. The way I read this is that I would read one of the short stories uh, right before bed each night. And if you do that for a week, there's a good chance that the imagery and general bad feeling will stick with you for a little while after you read that. I think because it can make you feel that tone even after you've read it, that's exactly what I want from a horror novel. So is it actually scary? Yes, I think it checks that box. If you're home alone and you want to drink some wine and read something that creeps you out, this works. The story has a lot of visceral imagery. Clive Barker will definitely paint some fucked up images in your head but I don't think it goes too far. I think everything is purposeful. It's done in a very artistic, but also matter of fact kind of way. Like this, this thing happens just part of the story. Uh, I'll read you a couple of quotes completely out of context. So it won't spoil anything just so you can get a taste of the writing style. It's forefinger hooked into his mouth and down into his gullet, the nail scoring the back of his throat. She'd gone, extinguished like a candle in a hurricane. Eyes like black shining gems set in broken faces. Eyes looking at him upside down on heads severed. There's definitely gory, messed up imagery. But again, I feel like it, it, it's done in a really cool way where it's not over the top for no reason. It just adds to the effect of the story. I think Clive Barker just became my favorite horror author <laughs> ever. And he's obviously a legend. But as far as his stuff being really scary, like really making you feel unsettled, uh, it's hit and miss, right? Read one Paul Tremblay story and it was A Head Full of Ghosts. And that one wasn't, you know, a pretty decent story. Wasn't scary. Didn't really make me feel creeped out in any sort of way. But this, this was like, this I think is basically what I've been looking for. And I'm going to jump into more Clive Barker for sure. As far as horror short stories go, this definitely goes in the A tier of horror. It is, like I said, I've, it's what I feel like I've been looking for out of a horror story. There's supernatural elements here, and that's something that's also very important to me. I think, yeah, yeah, people are often the worst monsters. I get that. But it's a lot more fun when you have a supernatural beast that can be just as fucked up as a human can. And you put that in a world with an author who just, he knows what he's doing with his words, and it shows. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. Have you read any of Clive Barker? 
If you have, definitely recommend your favorite Clive Barker story in the comments below. Until next time, later.